Uh, we'll need to order. What is it about something? 601. 601. All right. Uh, Sandra Flexley. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Right. Roll call time. Commissioner Carver here. Commissioner Connell here. Commissioner Tenak is excused. Commissioner Chair Barisi present. Commissioner Layton here. Commissioner Irons is excused, and Commissioner Jones is excused. I might just say that Sam is on a fire, so just keep him in your thoughts. And all the rest of the firefighters out there, stop right now. So. No, he's in work. Yeah. And it's the beginning of the season, even. It is absolutely the beginning. So. Yep. Yeah. Sam just got back from being down in Malheur County. He, he he stopped by, picked up the packet, and figured he'd be here. And I get an email late this afternoon. I'm at Battle Mountain, so. Good times. All right. Uh, did anyone, everyone get a chance to read the minutes? Uh, okay. Is there any, any issues with it or could we make a uh, kind of motion to accept if everyone is satisfied? I will. We have a motion to accept the meeting minutes. I second. A motion and a second. We actually had a, a mistake in the minutes. Oh, that's right. We we uh in the people in, in in the attendance line we missed you, Commissioner Layton, but you made several motions during the meeting. So we need to we do actually need to. So if if somebody would mind, Mike, would you mind amending your motion? Yeah, to, I'd like to amend that. Accommodate to, that change. To accommodate for her presence at the beginning of the meeting. And Jamie, are you okay if you amend your second? I do. Okay. I do. That's yeah. perfect. Second. Yeah, she's in the voice. Thank okay. you for reminding me of that. So, motion to uh, accept the minutes with the single amendment of uh, adding Mr. Linton and amendment second. We have a vote. Okay. Vote, 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 Commissioner Layton? Yes. Commissioner Carberry? Yes. Commissioner Connell? Yes. Commissioner Chair Barisi? Yes. The motion passes. Okay, there are several public hearings to get through, uh, a lot of content. So we're going to try and pop right through these without a lot of time. Uh, do you, does staff have anything before I jump in these public hearings? The only thing staff would do before you jump into the public hearings was would be to take just a moment and introduce Stephanie uh, Case, who is our new principal planner. She started on Monday. Um, she comes to us with nearly 10 years of planning experience with the um, with Morrow County. Um, the other thing that we haven't talked a lot about in this forum here is several months ago, the Gillum County Planning Director was in Gillum County. And um, they reached out because we do program for Gillum County. So they reached out. I have an I've had I've had a relationship of one kind or another with Gillum County for several years. Um, so they reached out um, between already working with the city on the building side and then um, some some knowledge of who I was and asked if we would be interested in um, providing their planning services. So we started that conversation. Um, the conversation was going really well. Um, and then they had their whole recall over there and it kind it, it, it it just kind of put a bump in the road. It, it, it kind of slowed things down a bit. Um, but we went ahead and posted the position. Um, hired uh, Stephanie about a month ago. Monday was her first day. And uh, yesterday, we actually went to, Stephanie and I attended the Gillum County Court meeting. Um, and they approved the IGA. Um, we received um, their signature today. We signed it on our end and sent it back. So, um Next step is the, for Stephanie and I to go over and meet with them and figure out just what it is we've gotten ourselves into. 
providing planning services for Jalen County, but it, it does provide us another planning staff. Um, Stephanie has some some experience with writing code, and uh, so we work together on a, a billable lands inventory and housing needs analysis back with Morrow County. Um, she certainly understands the county side of things to be able to pick up and do um, the work under that IGA. So anyway, I just ask you to welcome her, and I'm excited to have her on board. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Okay. Oh, let's jump right in. Uh, we'll start with the public hearing on condition use permit CUP 24 000002. Uh, it's called the order. The city of Portland is the uh, owner and applicant is, first, uh, is to approve barbed wire fencing at several city owned facilities, probably the city hall, city water, uh, water tower, city shop along Marine Drive, and the city's collective wells. The only other respective properties is commercial residential, multifamily, and open space. Criteria for approval was found in the Board of Development Code, Chapter 4.4, Conditional Use Permits, being processed as a Type 3 decision. The public hearing this evening will be conducted as follows, starting with staff report, then public testimony in the following order in by the applicant, any testimony supporting the application, any testimony opposing the application, any mutual testimony, and then if any, uh, an app, the applicant's rebuttal. Then we will close the public testimony after the record is closed for testimony. No other testimony will be heard from anyone unless the planning commission has a specific question. The planning commission may ask questions of staff, after which planning commission will discuss the matter and make a decision. The planning commission may make a final decision tonight or the matter may be continued to a time and date certain in the future. If the matter is continued, this will be the only notice of that time and date you will receive. <clears throat> Excuse me. For testimony, if you wish to speak, please fill out a testimony form and submit it to the associate planner. I will recognize those people wishing to speak. Any questions should be addressed through me. Please state both your name and address for the record when you come to the podium or if you're online. As the hearing is being reported, please keep testimony concise to the point. Testimony should be on the action of consideration and address the substantial criteria. The criteria that apply to the decision are listed in the staff report. Testimony on other issues will be rejected and not considered by the planning commission. Failure to raise an issue in sufficient detail to allow the Planning Commission and the parties the ability to respond to the issue prohibits an appeal to the Land Use Board of Appeals based on that issue. Similarly, failure to raise a con uh, raise constitutional or other issue regarding any conditions of approval in sufficient detail to allow the Planning Commission to respond to the issue prohibits a lawsuit in the Circuit Court on that basis. Now, I ask members of the Planning Commission to dis disclose any ex parte contacts, bias, or conflicts of interest. Please indicate the nature and extent of the ex parte contact, bias, or conflict of interest, and indicate whether you intend to participate in or abstain from the hearing. Hearing none, does anyone in the audience wish to challenge applying commissioners and impartiality? Hearing none, Actually, Nancy's going to do this one tonight, and I want to share that Rolf Craig is here this evening. He is the public works director, and he is also staff for this particular action because uh, the barbed wire is predominantly in his facilities. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Commission Chair Bruce. So, the request we have before you today is for existing barbed wire on top of fences located. Um, properties that are either owned or leased by the city of Boardman. And it is unclear if the city previously submitted an application and or received a conditional use permit for any of these, which is the reason why for the request today. The properties identified in this request are zone commercial and open space. Although the request is for the barbed wire on top of the fences, the fences meet the vision clearance and material requirements. The property known as City Hall currently has a fence, barbed wire, and razor wire due to the delicate nature of information being stored inside of the Sally Port, the transportation of inmates, and movement of personnel. The property known as City Water Tower currently has a fence, 
and barbed wire for security of the water tower and to ensure public safety being at such close proximity to Riverside Junior High School. The property known as City Shop currently has a fence and barbed wire. It houses heavy machinery for the Public Works Department and, and access to machinery, equipment, and other items should be limited to Public Works employees. There are no conditions of approval for this request and the city recommends approval of this request. Does anybody have any questions? I could not think of a single question. <laughs> so pretty much, you know, they're there. We're unsure if they were not done due to the process which they should have been done. And to ensure that they are, here we are today bringing these requests and just kind of bundled everything up for you guys and made it nice and easy, but as easy as we could. <laughs> Put a pretty pink bow on it. Yeah. <laughs> um, some of the fences do predate the current development code. Um, that would be the case for the water tower and probably the city shop. However, the city shop is being expanded and that, that fencing is actually being expanded and being, there's more going in. Um, but regardless of that, um, we did have a code enforcement complaint uh, we were doing enforcement on barbed wire and they were like, well, you have barbed wire. Is yours properly permitted? And when Brandon asked the question, I couldn't answer it. And the look, bit of looking that we did, we couldn't find anything, um, couldn't find anything that gave us a clear answer. So we thought the best approach would be just to do it all. And then we can say, yes, it's been properly evaluated and we have the permit that we need. Do you have a question? Does this... Would this include future expansions and building on city property? No, it wouldn't. Just those facilities. For the facilities as they are today. So let's just say um, City Hall, we just grow so much and we expand um, on that side and we either grow the Sally Port or, 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 or move it. Um, or do something else and have another area that spans. Maybe, maybe at some point in time, there's a decision to um, fence staff parking. I, I, I don't see a reason for that, but let's just say that would happen. That would be subject to, not only would that expansion be subject to a review process, but if there was a fence, um, the fence would require a fence permit and the barbed wire, if on top of it, would require the conditional use permit. Yeah. And a variance. Uh, variance uh, only if it was over the height. So, so yeah, the difference between the conditional use permit for the barbed wire and what we did for the youth facility, that was a variance because we were varying the height. So it's it's kind of apples and kumquats. I mean, we've got a barbed wire issue and we've got a height issue. They're both fence issues, but they're kind of different um, parts of the fence. But we have we have a, a clear lane as to how to either approve it or disapprove it or say, yeah, you can do it or you can't. Right. Now. Yep, in both cases. Yep. Whether it's the city or other. Right. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Uh, was there any questions for that? Was there any correspondence on this? Or there was. Uh, we received, Nancy received, go, go ahead, an Nancy. email. I received an email from. Uh, I think an adjoining landowner that said he didn't want further a barbed wire fencing, said you guys already have enough. And then I replied and shared the findings of fact and shared that we weren't looking to uh, add more barbed wire fencing throughout the facilities, but we're actually sending this request for what was already currently there. And after that, we haven't received any sort of response. No response from him and no other yeah. party. I'm not sure which one. I'm not sure. I believe he replied to the, uh, he might have replied to a few of them, but the one that he was most focused on was a city tower, right. the water tower. The water tower. Yeah, I mean, critical infrastructure and water placement makes sense and positive. So it's the water tower. Yeah. Yes. Important. Yeah, it's more an opportunity. Yeah, the kids. Yeah, right. some adults. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, there is that scene in Sweet Home Alabama where they're sitting on top of the water power water tower, um, drinking beer and drop, dropping their bottles into the the trash can bottle. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, well. Uh, is, do you have, is there any additional testimony to add to the record? Yes. No, and the city is the applicant, and so uh, we've kind of made our, yeah. we've done our piece, so. Yeah. Okay. Uh, is there anyone that, uh, additionally, that wishes to speak in favor of the application? Is there just one person online? Yeah. Is that what I'm saying? Yeah. We're, we're, saying, we're looking to you, <laughs> other guests in the audience. Unless Karen, you would like to have comment if you ever. Okay. Uh, does anyone wish to speak against the application? Any neutral testimony? Okay. Uh, well, the public testimony portion of the hearing is now closed. Uh, Questions, additional questions that wasn't uh, answered by staff. Uh, discussion time. That my thoughts. Yeah, I'm, it makes I'm just sense. for protecting the very first chapter law enforcement. Yeah, right. And then as to anybody when it comes to the future, now we have that field policy, so very right. fair. Right. And you should be sure 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 you should be it's been all it's all been there long enough lived here. So yeah. All but that is well, except for this back here. That one well, built yeah. that is still the old one, but yeah. Anyway. But again, that's for law enforcement. So years, 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 respect yeah. that's needed. Yeah. And even in the future, when if something really built or something that needed the same kind of protection of the water tower or law enforcement, then that's why we have this so we can be forward and no. able to prove it as well. Agreed. Well. Yeah, in the <laughs> right. Well, we are considering a second water tower in town, um, way to the south. Um, and it would either be fenced as a facility or or have some level of protection on it that would be you know anti climb or so. Yeah, it's just a matter of protecting that infrastructure. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Um, I look for a uh, commissioner to present a motion to either approve as presented or with any amendments if you so shall be. I move to approve conditional use permit CUP 24 0 0 0 0 0 2 as presented. I'll second. Okay, we have a motion to approve uh, the conditional use permit uh, as presented and seconded. We can vote. Yes. For... Commissioner Layton? Yes. Commissioner Carver? Yes. Commissioner Connell? Yes. Commission Chair Barisi? Yes. Motion passes. Okay. Next public hearing. Public hearing on transportation system plan or the TSP amendment LND 24 0004 is called to order. Okay, so I did something today in my office. Can I borrow one of your guys' findings from over there? <laughs> yeah, none of them read the plan all the same rules apply. Uh, actually, they're a little bit different. This one is a legislative uh -huh. hearing. Uh -huh. um, but once you do this one, it will be the same. Through that bridge, yeah. <laughs> I, I caught you, yeah. <laughs> okay, this is. Uh, this request is to adopt the number one Morrow County, Utah County Transit Development Strategy, uh, circa 2018. Is that what that is? Mm -hmm. uh, number two, the Hermiston Boardman Connector slash Boardman Port of Morrow Circular uh, from 2021. And number three, Morrow County Coordinated Human Services Transportation Plan 2022. All in support of a pending update to the city board and TSP to provide input and guidance to better inform transit public transportation portion, as well as to assist in setting standards for development of transit support systems provided by the loop and kayak within the city. This is the first of at least two public hearings with a final hearing before the city council. Okay. 
The public hearing will be conducted as follows, starting with staff report and then testimony from the applicants, testimony in support of the application, testimony opposing the application, and neutral testimony, and then we'll hear rebuttals after, if any. After we will close the public testimony, after the record is closed for testimony, no other testimony will be heard from anyone unless the planning commission has a specific question. The planning commission may ask questions of staff after which the planning commission will discuss the matter and decision. The planning commission may make a final decision tonight or the matter may be continued to a time and date certain in the future. If the matter continues, this will be on notice of that time and date you will receive. If anyone wishes to speak, please fill out a testimony form, submit it to the associate planner. I recognize that if people wish to speak from the question you just for me, please state both the name and address for the record or the podium or online as the hearing is being recorded. Please keep this one concise to the point. This one should be on the action under consideration to address the substantive criteria. The criteria that apply to the decision are listed in the staff report. Failure to raise an issue in sufficient details to allow the commission and parties to be able to respond to the issue. Pivots in the field of the land use board of appeals based on the issue. Similarly, failure to raise a constitutional or other issue uh, issues regarding any conditions of approval in sufficient detail to allow the planning commission to respond to the issue prohibits a lawsuit in circuit court on that basis. Now I ask the members of the planning commission to disclose any ex parte contacts, bias, or conflicts of interest. Please indicate the nature and extent of the ex parte contact, bias, or conflict of interest, and indicate whether you intend to participate in or abstain from the hearing. Does anyone in the audience wish to challenge a planning commissioner's impartiality? Uh, staff report. Nancy? Oh, what is this bouncing back and forth? <laughs> It'd be me. It'd be me on my toes. It'd be me. The next week. Oh, okay. Next week, me. Okay. So thanks for um, identifying the request. Um, this is really some groundwork um, as we move towards updating our TSP. Uh, we should have the notice to proceed on that project here in the next week. I'm hoping um, the check's been cut and we should be hearing back from ODOT shortly. The consultant has been selected and they're just waiting to get started. Um, that's gonna be a big project. It's gonna take us probably 15 to 18 months to work our way through that. Um, and our current TSP is uh, 23 years old, so um, well well beyond the time um, to do that. Uh, and with the growth that has happened in Boardman between 2001 and 2024, uh, we're seeing a lot of, of impacts. Um, I mean, the conversation we've been having about Boardman Avenue and Main, North Main Street, um, we're getting ready to do the design on South Main Street. The second action we're going to do tonight is another kind of pseudo transportation action. So uh, there's just a lot going on. And I think this is the start. The, the focus with this particular action is really around transit. The current TSP did not envision transit. It talks briefly about the fact that Greyhound stops at Boardman, which it doesn't do anymore. It now stops in Stanfield. Oh, wow. yeah. um, and it, it recognizes that there is a, um, a county special transportation program um, which has been in place for many years, but in the year since 2001, they've received um, a grant to do um, uh, services for veterans. Um, they've expanded significantly what they're doing. The state um, adopted a, a tax that comes back to jurisdictions and communities for transit support. So there's just been a lot that has happened, um, a lot of that in the last six or eight years. Um, but certainly over the past 20 years. And what used to be Morrill County Special Transportation is now the loop, and it's an actual transit department in the county. And most of you have probably seen the loop buses driving around town. They've gone from cars and vans to actual buses. Um, and they are working to establish a fixed route system, not only within Boardman um, to capture people who need to get to different places in town, but connecting those folks to work in the Port of Morrill area. And then they have routes that go and, and hit the three South County communities and come up and connect to Boardman. Sadly, the community that's not really been addressed in this yet is Irrigan. And I do think that is forthcoming, um, but it's a coordination between Morrill County 
to some degree, Umatilla County and then the Confederated Tribes of the Umatilla Indian Reservation as they offer the services that we all see the kayak buses out there. So this is really about laying the groundwork because that's conversation um, with um, with the county to put um, bus stops in town. And we don't have a standard by which we would even build a bus stop or require a bus stop to be built. You know, how much space do you need? Um, we know that we're having some conflicts with buses stopping for, uh, you know, to pick up or let off. And, and, and you don't establish a system without establishing stops. And whether there's a person there or not, you make the stop. It's it's just it's just what a fixed route system does, and so they pull over to make the stop, and the cars behind them aren't aren't aware yet or not attuned to the fact that we have a bus in town, um, and so it can create some conflict. So we need to figure out how we get bus stop signs out there, and then really, what does that mean in the long run? What makes what constitutes a bus stop? Should there be a should there be a bench? Should there be um, a, a weather protection? Should there be a garbage can so that people don't throw their trash on the ground? I mean, there's just a lot of things to consider and, and what that kind of means to the community and how how it how it grows. So we have no standards for those things. Um, so this is really about kind of laying that groundwork. So the three plans that I put in front of you that we want to adopt as guidance. And, and understand their guidance. This, these are not regulatory documents um, and they don't read as regulatory documents. They really are guidance so that when our, our consultant comes on board and starts doing work on the TSP, we can say, look, relative to transit, this is what we know. This is the information we have. We've adopted it. Um, the, the, the Planning Commission, the Council reviewed these. Um, we've all come to agreement that these are at least base level um, this is base level information that we can build from to be able to understand what transit might look like in Boardman. Um, the oldest document is from 2018. I was actually at the county when this one was, was drafted. It was a really interesting project. Um, it was a three-way, well, actually it was technically a four-way project, five-way, not ODOT. It was ODOT, Morrill County, Umatilla County, the Confederated Tribes of Umatilla, and then at the time, we also included um, Milton Free Water was part of the Milton Free Water Walla Walla MPO, which stands for something. It's a metropolitan. It's a metropolitan designation based on the size of Milton Free Water and Walla Walla together. And they ended up not really being included in the final product um, because their focus really wasn't Milton Free Water and Walla Walla. There really wasn't any over that way, so they just didn't really participate very fully. And it really ended up kind of being the two counties, the tribes, and ODOT. It's a really interesting document. And I would say that an awful lot in that document really hasn't changed. Um, I think the premise of that is still the same. We still have less people living in Boardman than people working at the Port of Morrill. I think Morrill County and the city of Boardman, um, the other communities in Morrill County are still trying to figure out how we grow our population so that we can actually feed the workforce rather than having the commute patterns that we have. We have more people commute into the Port of Morrill um, than commute out, but it's you really- mean, Excuse me, you mean businesses that are in the Port of Morrill, not Port of Morrill proper as a- as Right, no, I'm talking, about, I'm talking about the whole, right, okay. the businesses in the port. The, right. commute, the commute into the Port of Morrill businesses is yeah. large. Yeah. And what's really interesting is that the number of people who live in Boardman and actually commute out of town, and I don't mean out of town to the Port of Morrill businesses, I mean literally out of town, is pretty significant too. So that's kind of what we saw in that 2018 study. Very, very interesting um, data. And I don't think it has, it's probably changed some, but not so significantly that it would be um, detrimental as a, as a background document. The 2001 document um, was the county's attempt to kind of solidify routes. Um, and again, this was a, a multi-county effort. It was kind of this whole regional transportation look. So. It, it's a it's a document that talks about Hermiston and Boardman connector, and then the Boardman and Port of Morrow circular. I think we're still working on getting to that Hermiston Boardman connector. There was talk about running. I, I can't walk and shoot gun at the same time. So one would be going this way, a bus would be going this way, and then the other bus would be going this way, and I can't do those at the same time. And what I'm saying is that's connecting Boardman, Irrigan, Umatilla to Hermiston, and then and then Hermiston to Echo 
to Echo Stanfield and then around. So it's basically a 730, 395, I-84 route is kind of what it what it ends up looking at. And you're doing it one way on the hour or two hours or whatever, and then you're doing it the other way. So I can I can get the bus going this direction to go from Boardman to Umatilla, and then I can get the bus going the other way to get from Umatilla back to Boardman or, or wherever I may be going. So those are the concepts that they were trying to find in 2001. And again, it's not a perfect document either. And between two, and that was written during the, the during COVID. And so there are probably some assumptions that we would look at differently if we were to redo that today. And the county probably needs to redo that at some point in time to continue to refine the routes and to continue to have good input into that. The 2022 document is the Morrill County Coordinated Human Services Transportation Plan, and that is a mouthful. What that really is, is a document that the county is required to do under the funding structures that they have for their special transportation money and, and other, other funds as well. But it's a really good document relative to the demographics that are in Morrill County that the programs are serving. And that's what it's looking at. It's looking at what kind of population are we serving? And they look at the elderly, the disabled, um, uh, people in poverty. I mean, there's about eight different categories of folks that they look at in that particular plan. And it's it really helps them kind of drive what kind of services they need and, and how they would deliver those. So those are really the background documents. They're not our documents. We're, we're adopting them as guidance. We have no um, ability to change those documents. We're just simply adopting them um, and to guide the discussion that we'll be having as we update the TSP around transit. So that's the request, and I, that's kind of a summary of what those documents are and, and the reasons behind it. Um, the staff report really just addresses the, the reasons why. Um, because these are being adopted as guidance, um, when it gets in front of the city council and they do the final adoption, we won't be adopting them by ordinance, we'll be adopting them by resolution. And that's the difference between a regulatory document and a guidance document. And that's probably getting into more weeds than you guys are interested in. I have an interest in that kind of stuff as well. So happy to answer it. But because we're staff and we're also the applicant, that's kind of also the applicant's testimony as well. Well, on a, on a simple level, the the, the uh, questions in regards to the bus stops and the, the uh, how, how I guess, not how it works so much, but Oregon has a perfect example just finished over there, right? They are with their little stop, and I'm assuming they use the loop, or that's what the loop is for, or I mean, that's what the stop's for is the loop, or the other one? Actually, in Oregon, <laughs> it's kayak that's coming to Oregon. So, yeah, and they've moved that stop several times. Yeah, they put it now with the new sidewalks right there yep. in the corner of the base, what used to be Bates. Yep, right, the gas right. Station. rusty wagon or yeah. rusty truck or but yeah, the rusty, but rusty, I don't know. Whatever. What it is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, but that stop used to be closer to City Hall. Um, and then it moved closer to the county building. And now it's over there, um, off just off the highway. So that stop has moved several times. And I think that's, that's, that's the, that's the piece that we want to kind of, we want to work out some kinks before we do anything permanent. Right. Because we don't want to be, you know, putting cement bit, you know, we don't want to be cementing a bench into the ground or, or doing other kind of improvements and go, oops, that's not really the best space for the stop and, and then moving the stop. So we want, and we also want a really good standard for what our stops might look like, yep. but yeah. I think they finally got it right where they put it this time because it stays on the main artery through town and they don't have to go, you know, over right. here, over there. They can just keep their route straight, whatever, everybody knows it's there. Yeah. Can I ask you a question? Yes. Is there a requirement for parking, a parking like at one or two cars? Like say I I can't walk from here to there, but I can drive, get out of my car, and you can take me to Hermiston. Parking Is part of this gonna have a like a I think that's a really good issue, Karen, to bring up when we're working on the TSP and we're deciding how to do all of this stuff. Yeah, it's a good question. It's a little premature. Yeah, yeah. 
But don't they already have a band service? No, they, they do still do the door to door. I mean, so you can still call and get the door to door service. But if you want to. You're talking about? No, no he's talking about, about parking. Oh, parking. Oh, so, so it so means to get close to the bus stop. Yeah, like the parking ride. Right. Parking ride. Right. Right. Like yeah, park yeah. yeah, the yeah. parking ride is like they have it in everywhere. Just there are parking lots so close to the bus stop. Oh, yeah. Yeah. parking spots. <laughs> anyway, you can go yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, right. It's exactly. Yep. All good questions. It's a revenue stream. It's <laughs> in the bus. Yeah, in Vancouver anyway. So if I understand you still serve and they charge one. Yeah, yeah. Then what we're doing is literally the very groundwork because it hasn't been anything. So we're just starting, and this is going to allow us just to get started. This is data collection for input to the TSP update. Yep. Yeah. Well, yeah. is this something that the city has to give up city land in order for the bus stop, or who's who's going to have to provide the finances of it? So, good question. Um, it's not our program. We won't be funding it. So, we'll be looking at now, will the bus stops be in right away? Most likely. So, as we work to design, like we know we're going to be in this, we're, we're entering into the process right now where we, we're going to start designing the rebuild of South Main. And we know there's probably at least two bus stops on South Main. So, the question is, is what's the safest way to build a bus stop? Probably a bus, a, a bump in, not a bump out, but a bump in, you know, and have it say bus stop. So is the city kind of contributing some right away to that process? Yes. If we were to design parking along South Main Street, and I don't know, I don't know what the final design is going to be, so I don't know if there will be on-street parking or not. But let's just say there is. This would have the potential of taking some parking spaces out to be dedicated for a bus stop for a, a place for a bus to pull over. That would be the city's kind of contribution to the program, but it is a county program. And so when we start talking about bus stop amenities, that's going to be predominantly a count. It's a county program. It's going to be, we're going to look to them to make those improvements as part of their transit program. After we say you can do it here yep. and here. And right, and right. Over here. Right, and there would be, we're doing that permitting process with them right now. They, they've got a number of stops. I mean, they're kind of they're kind of doing the work now, um, and we need to get with them. We've had a couple of meetings, and they've got kind of the current finalized bus route stop map, and they're ready to sit down for us to kind of work with them and go through that permitting process and say, yep, yep, you can put the bus stop here, and yes, we'll allow you to install that bus stop sign in the right-of-way, so we are permitting those those locations and we're permitting them to put those signs in. At this point in time, we know it's still um, tentative enough. We're not going to ask for any amenities and we don't have a standard by which to ask for those amenities yet. But they know we're going to ask. They know we're going to ask for those. So. so there's a turnout lane for a bus. Can any bus use it? Or is it strictly for the... Uh, for the loop and the kite, because I mean, if they're doing one on South Main, you know the school bus goes over there. Now, can they use it as well? They don't as have to. They have red lights. Different. They have blinking lights. Everybody has to stop. Right. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I mean, could they? Yes. Um, it will be signed. It will have the bus stop number on it for the loop route that 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 stop is assigned to. Um, but could the bus stop use or could the school? Yeah. But it's not a normal stop for a school bus. It probably it is not going to be in the same location as a school bus stop would be. Um, and I think the big difference is that the, the, the loop buses or the kayak buses don't have the ability to turn the flashing lights on and stop the traffic behind mm -hmm. them. It's a different and the legal, it's a different requirement. And the legal behind that. Even, right. Right. That stops well, everybody from doing I'm just that. saying that because the school bus that stops by the fire wash and lets out all those kids. There's a lot of kids there. There's a lot of traffic there. So if they could pull off the road even farther to protect those children from all the cars, you know, I see it, I see it being a good thing for that for that trailer area because those kids aren't you know running in potentially in the road. Right. I wouldn't ask them to stop on main anyway. They do though. Why can't he? They pull in right there and drop them off inside. Some kids go into that gravel parking lot, but sometimes they park right on the road. 
Oh, they got where they have, used to park right on the road. Right, they got to have a standard. Of the the building. Actually, the Prince Austin is trying to bust that. Yes. <laughs> so yeah, they got, if it's a the designated area, that's just you know, a little more yeah. protection for the children. So. Yeah, but that, yeah, we separate from this. Well, and, and remember that we're in the process of building a road over there. And you know, my apologies to all the businesses that are, are dealing with the, the work on Southeast Main and, and or Southeast Front and, and um, First. But when that's done, that will provide a loop that we're hoping that the transit buses can take advantage of to eliminate the stops on Main. It could also provide an opportunity for school buses to get on the loop and get off of Main. So um, I think as we build the loops and we build these external other transportation routes for, for cars and bikes and peds, and buses that maybe we can get buses off the most traveled route <laughs> and maybe and so that those conflicts are stopped are happening on a lesser traveled road. So these are all of the kinds of things that we're talking about. You guys are asking all the right questions. So, yeah. You know, school buses, they they need to stop in the lane of traffic because they stop both lanes. Right. If they pull over, they're not going to stop the traffic. So they want them stopped in the lane of traffic. So it stops all the cars so they can cross the road. But if they could be off the main I think it's all different road. Road through town. That different road better. would be better, but if they're going to stop on Main Street, they're better off stopping in the lane and, and stopping on the traffic because right. you're going to have kids running across the road with traffic. Right. Good point. And just so you know, every time I drive by Southeast Front, I'm very happy that the book was getting done. It needed it. So. It did need it. Yeah. Yes. Anyway, sorry to do that. Um, was there anything else to share with that? Oh. Uh, is there anyone else who wishes to speak in favor of the application? If we had someone join online, who left? He was driving his car, so <laughs> they left. <laughs> Just what's that? Yeah. Uh, is there anyone who wishes to speak against the application? Okay, any neutral testimony? When, yeah, when just a quick question. When you said that we have no say in where it was, you said we had no say in a bit ago. Um, what, is, what does that mean? We don't get to tell them what the routes are or how, no. how we jive with Human no. County or the, the things we, that? the three documents that we're adopting are adopted, have been adopted by Morrill County. We can't right. change those documents. Okay. We're just simply adopting just them as is. Yes. Gotcha. Yep. And the routes that was uh, like down um, future scape was uh, to be determined by a committee. I think I read in there, wasn't it? The, the proposed committee, like a government. Um, are you talking so, about in the one about the circular and the in that in that yeah, document? Yeah, like proposed kayak routes. Right. So so actually Karen sits on the, the loop committee. Um and that committee has about nine people on it, if I remember right. Um Aaron and Irrigan, there's a couple of folks from South County, number of staff that um sit on it. Uh, Stephanie in her previous role at the county participated in that. Um so that's the group that will continue to guide kind of what kayak or not kayak, what um Morrill County transportation does going forward. Yep. Okay. Uh well no more follow to this to speak to. So we will close the oh just one question is here. Uh, questions for the staff. Any additional questions? I think said. I just I had a personal conversation, so I felt like I didn't want to If I didn't have that, I would have been quick. <laughs> okay. Uh, I would entertain a motion. Uh, if someone either wants to recommend the TSP amendment, uh, whether they have any proposed changes or to uh, deny recommendation. I would recommend the TSP amendment of the LND 24504 as presented to the Planning Commission. 
I'll second. second. Okay, so there's a so Mike is moving or Commissioner Cornell is moving to recommend the TSPM and LND two four to zero 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 four as presented. Yeah, as as it sits because nothing the council with no changes, right? I mean there's nothing we need and that's we didn't have discussion about anything. Yeah, it's okay. just corrected city council and yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, because I'm not on city council, so but we're re you're recommending it oh, as it's them. presented to them. Yeah. Okay, yeah. sorry, sorry. Yeah, as presented to city council. I thought this was just an example that y'all used to oh, make yeah. us in there. So I was like, all right, I'll just sorry about that. As presented to city council. Second? Yes, I'll take it. Okay. And that was you're good with that? Yes. Okay. Uh so we have a motion, we have a second to uh recommend the TSP amendment as presented to the council. Yes. So Commissioner Layton? Yes. Commissioner Carberry? Yes. Commissioner Funnel? Yes. Commissioner Chair Greasy? Yes. Motion passes. Now, I would say this time you could probably abbreviate. There's two or three questions we probably need to ask. The only question I had is what happened to um, LG24 6? It was four, five, and seven. This one? No, it, it probably got assigned somewhere and it was probably a different action. Uh, so the numbers get assigned to different things. So it's not in here though, right? No. Okay. Okay. The public hearing on downtown development plan amendment LMD 24 00005 is called to order. Uh, City of Bourbon is the applicant, and this request is to update the Main Street quote downtown unquote development plan to remove reference to and drawings of quote, arterial city developed alter alternative, end quote, as shown on page 61 and update appendix A to reflect current chapter 2.2 commercial district of the BDC in preparation of a project to redesign and reconstruct South Main Street. This is the first of at least two public hearings with the final hearing before the city council. I would say you could probably um, skip the rest of that um, to the second page about the ex parte conflict bias or conflicts of interest statement. Yeah. The conduct of testimony criteria remains the same. Uh, so now I ask uh, members of the Planning Commission to disclose the ex parte context bias or conflicts of interest and please indicate the nature and extent of such and whether you intend to participate in our hearing from the hearing. Excuse me. Does anyone wish to challenge uh, planning commissioner's impartiality? Okay, hearing none, uh, sit down. Right. Yeah, so um, as I've said tonight, I think a couple of times, we're getting ready to start designing South Main Street um, for a complete rebuild. And we had this plan that was adopted in 2001. Good plan, lots of good ideas in it, still applicable, good, good policy, lots of good design um, with one kind of major exception. Uh, it, it envisions Main Street having a walking path down the middle of it. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's just not a very safe alternative. Um, ODOT doesn't much care for it. And uh, so we decided to amend this document because when we start designing it, we really have to comply with what our law says. And this is kind of, you know, this is kind of the guidance that we have. So we want to remove that. As I started going through the document, it was like, ooh, there might be just a couple other things to fix while we're doing it. So I, I'm reading street names in it, and I'm going, Dillaba, Dillaba. I know that name. Why do I know that name? It's like, oh, that's Tatone now. So we, I struck Dillaba and replaced it with Tatone. Um, and then I got to Appendix A, and I went, ooh, that was like adopted in 2003. Um, it's the commercial district, and so we want to update that as well. We just want to make it a little fresher. You know, the data in here is, is old. The numbers are old. Um, we're not going to take the time to update that information. 
But um, I think the design considerations, uh, when you when you look at how this is laid out with the roundabout, it was drawn from this plan. And when you look at what is proposed for the other side of Main Street, when those 64 acres develop, that's this plan too. And the plan is not rock solid. It doesn't say you have to do this. It was adopted again as guidance. Um, but um, again, the, the I think the philosophy in the plan is still good. The theory is still good. Um, so we'll see as that property develops, what might come out of it. And certainly um, just from good planning, we want streets to be clear intersections and don't want them off, off count, kilter or anything. Um, we may not get three streets on the other side, but whatever streets we do get, we want them to align with either city center circle or with Kincaid or with Willow Fork. Um, so uh, the, the gentleman who's owned that property already over there for many, many years has uh, divided it and given it to two of his sons. And as we understand it, they have been trying to seek partners to develop that property. So we're hoping at some point in time to say, hey, something's coming. Um, I don't know what that will be. I know what I, I have a sense of some of the people they're talking to, the types of businesses they're looking for. Um, all very, very positive. But again, right over here. Yep. Nice. To the other side, the other side of those trees, the trees along Main. So this is 64 acres um, is what this is really um, set to give um, kind of some guidance and influence into how that would design. So, um, you know, basically, if you flip through this and just kind of go by pages, um, you know, I struck through the second page. Uh, the other thing I think I should share is that I've not been able to put my fingers on, on specifically the document that was adopted. I had a document in a binder. And so I reached out to both ODOT and the Department of Land Conservation and Development and said, not by any chance, going back to 2001, you guys have anything? And they sent me some things. Um, and so I have a word version that is consistent with what's in here. But all of the drawings that I have that inform most of the pages, all of the drawings in here, I, I literally only have from the PDF that I found that we put on the website and then from what the binder I have. So we're kind of trying to pull parts and pieces together to even do the update. What I will share is that that fax machine, um, or yeah, this, this, this page two, we're proposing to delete that because I'm fairly certain that wasn't in the adopted version because it's dated that the little fact date in here is after the fact. But it, what you should notice here is in this, um, this is the city hall. This is the development that has happened on this side. Um, not exactly, but close. Um, it shows the parcelization that's happened over here. Um, you know where the senior center is it shows it it's shown though that the senior center was proposed to be a lot closer to the street instead of further back so it's a little bit different basically read the words don't look at the picture <clears throat> right that's gonna be hard to do <laughs> so i'm proposing to delete that because it, it actually came after the fact and it kind of got stuck into into the document but otherwise truly page 61 is where we are um deleting the city developed alternative or making a few other changes to that page. And then on page 63, it's the same thing. We're proposing to delete the city developed um, alternative. Both of them have multi-use paths that kind of run down the middle of the road. And then um, there's a couple of other typographical errors in here that we captured and then changing Dillabaugh to Tatone. Um, and then again, um, replacing the commercial, <coughs> excuse me, the commercial district that starts on about a page, a hundred and... Just a quick question, are you going by the square page numbers or the no. original printed numbers? Not the square ones. No. Okay, because that's about the packet, right? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Well, either way, it's just so I know. Yeah. Which one, because some of them are covered up. <laughs> yes, they are. Oh, they may be, yes. Yes. 63 in the packet is page... 301. Right. Yeah, yeah, I got it. I got it there. Okay. Yes, I'm not looking at the same packet. So um, what I am proposing to replace and our appendix A is actually item D on our agenda tonight. So we'll we'll talk a little bit more about that because when we when we conclude this, I want to get the most current version of the commercial district in here. So that that kind of concludes my staff report on this one. I'm happy to answer any questions you have. Um I just think this is a great document. I really like it. The question I had is, I saw the, the 
commercial and residential streets on a right of way of 60 feet. Is that what Main Street has also? Is it 60? 60 is, is wider because it is an arterial. Okay. So well, the other thing, parking. yeah, the, well, we'll see with the design whether we do on street parking or not. We do have a lot of utilities out there. And, and a lot of demand for utilities. It's this thing called data centers. They, like, they put a lot of fiber in the ground. I, I don't get it. I mean, I don't understand, but um, a lot of demand for space for utilities. And then we have to separate um, water and wastewater by so many feet. And then, and then we have an undergrounding requirement for power. So when you until electric's putting power, they, they need to go in the ground as well. And so everything has to be <laughs> separated by so much di distance. Um, and then fiber companies don't like to put one bundle next to the other bundle. They want them to be so many feet apart. And then if it's one fiber company and another fiber company, they're also looking for a separation of their of their bundles. So yeah, I think it's an 80 foot right away. It is an arterial. I, I will share that we have at least three or four places where we have standards for roads and every one of them is in conflict with the other one. So one of the objectives that we're working on as we work through all of these amendments is to eliminate as many of those conflicts as we can and get to the point where the only place you will find the standard will be in our public work standards book. So when we start talking about how wide is it supposed to be, hard question to answer. We don't really appease fiber optic people that don't want to be next to the competition, do we? And dig two ditches? No. They're on both sides of all our roads. Wow. Can't blow your eggs one basket in them. Like, yeah. Uh, yeah. You get one trench, put it all in there. Yeah. Well, who's out there? Yeah, I know. I've seen them. I've seen them. But I mean, if they're, if they're, if they're digging the hole, I don't, I, I have, I would, doesn't seem right to, to dig another one just because they don't want to be next to those guys. Oh, it's like that. And that is incomplete. Oh, well, she was mentioning different well, companies, not one. Well, yeah. yeah. Right. Even if it's the same company, they don't want to have one bundle next to the other. Right. And if it's different companies, they don't want to be next to either one of those. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's just like I said, 80 feet will become not wide enough. And and then so, the depth will become an issue because it'll be, you know, something here. It, it will be 3D planning because we'll be planning for the width, the length, and the depth. Yeah. Anyway, back to the downtown development plan. <laughs> uh, was there, was there anything to share? I think I've covered everything I have. There's been no correspondence on this. Well, is there anyone who wishes to speak in favor of the application? Other than that. Does anyone wish to speak against the application? Any neutral testimony? Okay. The public testimony portion of the hearing is now closed. Uh, that was a lot of information. Uh, and I skimmed through the pictures. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. Well, the best document is probably half pictures, if not more. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, I'll be honest, that first that, that picture uh the kind of the center of outlay, I didn't think it was a walk thing. I thought it was like a uh like a tree. Yes, so like a, yeah, like a yeah. beautification lane type thing. Yeah, well, it's when you look at the standards where they've got it written out, the one on page 63 and 65, 61 and 60, whatever the pages those are, yeah, 61 and 63, and you look at how they're all labeled, it says walking path. So yeah, yeah. yeah, some of the some of the drawings don't really reflect exactly what the yeah. I remember seeing that say. long time ago. Right, but if it was supposed to be like that one they did at a standfill, that turned into a just giant mess of weeds. So I, mean, I, I don't think we would want that anyway. Yeah. 
Yeah, you're talking about on 395. Yeah, uh -huh. it is just a mess of weeds. Yeah. yeah. I had no issues or questions with it. So it was very straightforward, made sense to me. Mm -hmm. But any questions or anything we should discuss? I do not have any questions or anything I need to get in touch with. I like the pictures of the benches. Mm -hmm. Still, twenty-three years old, but yeah, still appropriate. Yeah. Probably more expensive now. <laughs> Which reach could be a little greener. <laughs> All right. Um, I, with no questions, I entertain a motion to uh, recommend the plan amendment to the city council as presented. I uh, move to recommend the downtown development plan amendment LMB 24 0005 as moved to the city council. I'll second it. Uh, I've got a motion and a second to recommend the amendment as presented to the city council. I'll second it. I move to recommend the amendment as presented to the city council. Yes. Commissioner Layton? Yes. Commissioner Carberry? Yes. Commissioner Connell? Yes. Commission Chair Barisi? Yes. Motion passes. Okay. Uh, final hearing of the night. Public hearing on Boardman Development Code Amendment LND 24 000007 is called to order. City Boardman is the applicant. This is a request to update Chapter 2.2 commercial of the BBC to a new standard related to bed and breakfast inns to add language to the use tables for both commercial and tourist commercial highway subdistrict and to address minor housekeeping items. The applicable criteria for amendment of the BDC is found in Chapter 4.1.600, Type 4 Procedures. This is the first of at least two public hearings with the final hearing before the City Council. Conduct, testimony, and criteria will remain the same as previous public hearings this evening. I uh, ask the members of the Planning Commission to disclose any ex parte contacts, bias, or conflicts of interest. Please indicate the nature and extent of any ex parte contact, bias, or conflict of interest, and indicate whether you intend to participate in or abstain from the hearing. Does anyone in the audience wish to challenge a Planning Commissioner's impartiality? Hearing none, uh, part of a uh, staff report for us on this. Yeah, I'm just going to jump into the draft language with this one, like I did the last three, and just jump in for the last two and just kind of jump into the documents. Um, I had a couple of things that have happened um, in my time here that have just kind of caused me some angst with the commercial district. Um, this doesn't fix all the problems, but it's kind of a first cut at fixing the ones that have maybe been the most um, kind of in our face or would appear to be somewhat problematic with, with kind of where we are and where we're headed. Um, one of the first things that really threw me is somebody said, well, where's this tourist commercial district in your in your development code? And I'm like, we don't have a tourist commercial district. And they're like, well, it's on the map or no highway sub district. I went, I looked on the map and I went, well, OK, there's highway sub district on the map. It's not in the book, but in the book, it says tourist commercial and it's not on the map. I finally found somewhere that kind of told me one was the other and the other was that they were the same. So I tried to call that out in here so that where the tourist commercial is out, we're actually calling it tourist commercial or highway sub district because it's confusing if you don't know. So eventually we need to pick one or the other and get the map and the and the code language the same, but maybe this will kind of get us through until we can actually do the work with both the map and the code language. So we've added that. 
Um, in the in the first use table for just the commercial zone, so it's it's on the second page of the draft language, and I apologize, I don't have the packet, so I don't know what packet page number that is. 408. 408. Um, we have an allowance uh, for bed and breakfast ends as a conditional use, but bed and breakfast are generally done in a home. And in this particular case, homes are also allowed as a conditional use, and it's the commercial zone. We really don't want to be building single family homes in our commercial district. We really want commercial businesses in our commercial district. That will be something that we need to further refine when we get into a bigger update of this, is how we kind of move those residential uses out of our commercial zone. Um, so that's the second piece where we remove that. Um, and then it's a couple of pages. Uh, again, there was some typographical wrong use of that and then on um, two pages out, after that. Um, and then um, under special standards for certain uses, um, which is 2.2.170 relative to the sections, um, bed and breakfast ends are listed there. We scratch that and we scratch the, the, the requirements or the, uh, the standards for that. So, Again, that's still, you will still find that same language in our residential zone because that's where bed and breakfast in should be allowed, would be in a residential zone, in a house, in a residential zone. We can get into what that means, but it's really not pertinent to this discussion. We're trying to move something that is a residential use out of the commercial, out of the commercial use zone district. Um, some misspellings of a couple of words again as I move through here. Cannot is a singular word. Queuing is misspelled in here. Um, we fixed that. And then when we got to get to the table, the table for the tourist commercial subdistrict, that is the subdistrict right here at the interchange. And a couple of things uh, stuck out. So again, we removed that same reference to bed and breakfast inns. Um, under the commercial list, it did say auto-oriented and auto-dependent uses and facilities, including truck stops. But probably about a year, year and a half ago, maybe a year, well, Fairmont was still around. So a year and a half ago, probably, we sat down with a group who was trying to buy the property right up here where you approve the hotel, the restaurant, and the RV resort. Prior to that, we were working with a group who wanted to put a truck stop there, not a not a car, not not for cars to fuel a full blown truck stop. And we couldn't get there. We couldn't get them through all of the traffic requirements that they would have to meet based on the Main Street IAMP. And so that's why I've scratched including and added the word excluding. We, this is just not the right interchange to put a truck stop on. If you want to do a truck stop, then, then work with Mr. Devon at the property where the car block is and put your truck stop in. That's a much more appropriate place. Or out at Tower Road where the Loves is. There's enough space. The interchange is big enough to accommodate the turning movements. You know, It's one thing in a commercial zone like this to get a truck in that's going to deliver goods to family dollar or dollar general or to the grocery store. But that's that's a truck a day. Yeah, we're going to control the traffic we have just from normal people, let alone another truck, a truck stop. That's right. Insane. So so that's that's the rationale behind going from including to excluding there. And then there's a couple of items that are allowed in the commercial zone. And the way to think about this table for this sub district is this is a refinement of that list of uses. So if somebody were to come in and try to site in the tourist commercial subdistrict, this is the list that we would be looking at. And retail is not included. Personal and professional services aren't included. Um, medical and other health-related clinics or emergency service facilities aren't included. So it's kind of like, we need to add a few things because those are the kinds of things that we would want in our tourist. We know they already exist. But remember, this further refines the list. So if somebody's citing in that area, I'm going to look at this list for the allowed uses, not the commercial list. Yeah, right. it, it narrows it. It more focuses it to things that you would want in a tourist, tourist commercial area. Now, I'm also going to say that I think when we get to the point where we're really redoing our development code and we're really having those conversations, there's a much bigger conversation to be had about uses in commercial zones. And do we really want that to be a tourist commercial zone? I mean, I think there's a whole policy conversation that we need to have. I'm just trying to do some quick fixes now to kind of address the shortcomings based on conversations we're having with people who want to do things in the zones. Like, gosh, I can't authorize a retail use. 
and and Turf's commercial is that whole strip along Northeast Front. That whole strip along Northeast Front is Turf's commercial. So if somebody wanted to come in and approve a retail use currently, I'd have to look at the list and go, I don't have a real clear path to say yes to a retail use. And what do we really need in downtown Boardman? We need some retail uses. And is that space or that that sub district is is defined as is far the, as space or how far it goes that way, how far it goes that way? Right. It's right at the interchange. So once you get to Oregon Trail, you're in just commercial. When you're south of Oregon Trail, it's a different, it's it's that first use zone. It's the commercial use yeah. zone. Um when well, and then when you go out to the Port Moro interchange, that is a commercial district, but it's the it's the service center district. Sure. It has its own list of things that are allowed. I don't remember. I think I made a change or two to it as well. But so those are the, the reason I asked that question is because we we were hoping to at some point have a more solid name for it, whether it's tourist commercial or tourist, yeah, tourist commercial sub district or highway sub district. Right. Highway sub district to me makes all the sense in the world because it's so focused on by the highway. Right. Leave that alone because other people would well. Where's the tourist? Is that down by the river? Is it over here? Is it over here? So if it's highway, that means we know that it's that. Right. After that, then name them, you know. Right. But it, if it's relative to the highway. Right. Makes more sense. Yeah. I Yeah. And again, I've got one name in one place and a different name in the other place, and it's really unclear what they are. So I, there, we need some clarity on that. Um, so anyways, that really is what's, those are the inputs into why I'm making the suggestions I'm making um, in here as well, where Dillabaugh is, is a holdover, it's an old section, um, changing that to Tatone, where it's referenced in here. Um, there are some numbering issues that I identified in the service center subdistrict, but I did not make any changes to the uses. And that... That might be it. Though I think that concludes kind of the changes, and that's the reasoning for them. So again, this is not a complete rewrite. This is really just a focus on the things that right now, the experience that I've had over the past two and a half years, these are the things that are causing problems that have kind of been in my face problems, and that's what I'm really trying to address. Yep. Happy to answer any questions you may have. I have a question for you. Um, in both the tourist commercial sub district and the commercial district, mm -hmm. in the land use and permitted in there, there's residential in both of those. Yeah. Why? It's a really good question. And um, again, that's the piece that I think is the bigger policy discussion about removing that. It is, it is only allowed through a conditional use process. There are a couple of places where we, um, I, I think it's easier to make the case for maybe multifamily as a, as a transitional use. I think it's also worth having the conversation about mixed use, commercial on a bottom floor, residential on the top floor or floors, however that may be. I think that's where we need to go. I didn't want to take on that bigger policy discussion at this point in time, Zach. But believe me, that the fact that there is residential use is identified in this is of concern. I know that, again, when you look, go back to the downtown development plan and you look at the proposal for the property on the other side, there is there is a reference in there about a multifamily along the eastern border of that property from north to south. And to some degree, that makes sense because it creates a, bo a border or a boundary between the current residential uses that are along Anderson and then the future fairly, ho hopefully, fairly robust commercial district that will be there. And so that multifamily housing would create that that barrier between those two kind of uses. Yeah. Um, but you know, one of the things we identified as we were going through our audit is that we allow mixed use. We have no standards for how we would allow mixed use. If somebody, we've had that, we had a phone call and, and somebody was saying, hey, I, I don't remember what the, the veterinarian or something like that. Mm -hmm. And we're thinking, oh wait, that would be great. And then they're asking these questions about mixed use. And then we just stumble over ourselves because we have no way to answer that question. 
Um, that's a bigger lift than I wanted to take in this minor update. But just so you're prepared, those are some of the conversations that we're going to be having um, as we as we continue to move through um, all of these updates and changes. Yeah, yeah. I, I didn't mean to put you on the spot. No, no, no. They're good no, questions. They're really good questions. Yeah. yeah. Well, one other question regarding the the um, stuff that we're now excluding, such as the truck stop. Mm -hmm. Was there ever a discussion to add to that the truck repair that's that's still allowed underneath it where it says vehicle sales? Or is there any discussion about vehicle sales being being allowed in this? Was there ever? And the reason I ask is because I've always thought of of uh, <clears throat> like going through your Matilla in the old well, prior to them redoing their main thoroughfare, all of the little car sales places that they had stretched along there that would last for a year or whatever, and the majority of the cars that were in there, nobody wanted to buy. That's why they sat there. And if it happens to be a new development area, and, and we got lucky and bought a, a car dealership came here, it would be fairly good sized. And right. that's something we'd have to, we're gonna have to deal with down the road at some point, whether it's car sales or the truck repair, but if, if we don't want truck stops, then I would keep out the truck repair and keep them off of the, off of that, this area down here where all the traffic is already. And I always say that because if you go look at the shop out of love, I'm not saying that we'd have that kind of traffic here, but that truck stop repair shop of loves back behind at the end of their property <clears throat> is one busy place. Very busy. I place. mean, they just, and they only have one building that they pull them in and out of six or five days or whatever it is, but it's busy. Yeah. No, we haven't got into that level of detail. Um, I, I don't disagree that the conversation is necessary. Um, you know, we're only going to see because of how the interchange area management plan is written and how we've, you know, so city adopted that. That is our that's our adopted law for how we're going to manage this interchange going forward. Um, we're only going to see more tightening of the ability to move anything of size through there. Um, so I think I think as businesses, I will tell you what when we were talking to that to that group that was trying to do the truck stop it wasn't us saying no that caused them to walk away it was us saying you have to figure out how you can comply with the main street right. interchange area management plan and the more they looked at it the more they knew they couldn't and so i think it's the same thing with any business that would come in and would create significant truck traffic it's like look this is what you're going to have to comply with right and and this is where your limitations are going to be we're not i I I am um, I'm an odd kind of planner because I have a really strong sense of private property rights, and I I get really hesitant when we start saying, well, you can't do this and you can't do that and you can't do this and you can't do that. So I really try to balance that against what's right for the community. And somewhere in there, you find that that space in the middle, and it works. But I think some of that is saying this is what's required. Right. If you can figure out how to do this and meet the standards, we'll have a conversation about whether or not it's allowed or not. You know, it, so again, think of it this way, Mike. It's not about whether or not we're saying yes or no. It's about we're asking them to show us how they're going to do it. Sure. So I think we're better off to have more opportunity. Because again, I think capitalism works and we live in a free market economy. So I think having more alternatives and more opportunities is the right way to go. But they have to figure out how to meet the basic standards that we do have. Right. Main Street, the big one is the IAMP. That right. is the biggest thing that is going to drive how people are going to develop on right. this property. And I, I wouldn't, I would never ask for anything to to take away from private property rights because I don't think we have enough of them in anyway. Right. Just there's, if because we only, we're limited. We don't have a lot of space there. We're, we're limited into what we can allow. So, and, and there's plenty of room to, to put all of those businesses in an area that doesn't affect that immediate thing, you know, and uh, trucks is one of them. But again, the auto sales thing, I just, I go back to you until again, and all of the businesses that ever closed at one time or another had a used car sales lot there every time. Well, and most of those used car lot sales are on the lot where our, used, uh, the old gas station was. Exactly. Because yeah. before Interstate 82, right. there were no fewer than 15 gas stations in Umatilla. Mm -hmm. 
and they and they've all been used car lot at one point or another since then. Yeah. 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 So any other questions on this? On the proposed changes again there's a lot more work to do i'm really just trying to hit the things that have been the problems or the limitations based on conversations we've been having with potential developers a lot of hard work holy moly i thought my job was hard <laughs> that's right saying what i said to you today you're just keep doing what you're doing you're be completely out of yeah, people like Stephanie and Nancy and I, we just kind of, you know, kind of live for this stuff. So, like I say. You know that thought on some levels, right? Oh, yeah, I know. <laughs> just checking. Yeah. I'm a policy wonk. I mean, we appreciate it. We need it, obviously. But still. It's a little weird. I know. Yeah. You're going to have a certain love for the community. Sure. I think. And documents. Yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah, the documents are fun. <laughs> yeah. Well. Oh, was there any um, correspondence on that? No, none. I, you know, and I'm really surprised. We noticed every owner of commercial property in Boardman. Because we're required to by law. So 60, 67. 67 landowners um, received notice for this hearing, and they just notice just went out for the city council hearing that'll happen on August 6th. Not a single inquiry. That's amazing. I didn't get one. No. Nope. You didn't did get you, one. Did you send it to Jack? Since I don't own the property, but I didn't get it. Well, we go to the property owner. Okay, mm -hmm. that's why. But but there's also a statement on there that says so to forward it to the renter or the tenant. So well, good thing you're getting the information here. Right. Okay. <laughs> yeah, he must know that. Yeah, yeah. Nice. <laughs> yeah. I love Jack. All right. Uh well, was there anyone wishing to speak in favor of the application? Sorry, yeah. Does anyone wish to speak against the application? A neutral testimony. Okay, the public testimony portion of the hearing is now closed. Uh, uh well we should probably make a motion of some guidance either recommend the amendment for that to the council i know to recommend the development code amendment lv lnd 24-00007 is presented to the city council as a member. Well, no, we're not. Are you proposing an amendment or the amendments as presented? As presented to be amended, right? Because okay. they're being amended. I just want to make sure we're clear, like we're not asking for additional amendments. No, as they're presented to be amended. Okay. If they want it to be. Yeah. So, no, yes. Okay. I say. Okay, uh, so we have a motion and a second to recommend uh, BDC amendment LD24 as presented to the city council. We roll call votes. Commissioner Layton? Yes. Commissioner Carberry? Yes. Commissioner Connell? Yes. Commissioner Chair Barisi? Yes. The motion passes. That was your last one. That's right. <laughs> All right. I like starting at six o'clock. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, we got, oh, planning official report. Was there, was there, a there was. There's a one sheet in there that has, it's just a table and it kind of shows permits that have been issued for the first six months of this year. Um, do you know what page that is? Four twenty-seven. Yeah, we could be safe. Yeah. And and 
Next month, you'll see July and then an annual total. And then the month after that, you'll see August and you'll see an annual total. So, and, and but we're going to continue to add to that. We're going to add um, some, just some text in there that you'll see every month about kind of some of the other stuff going on. Um, we'll, we'll talk um, in those updates about things like we just did tonight, what's, a, what's coming. Um, and then we're, we're initiating this big kickoff. We're going to be, we're working on just a whole slew of updates to planning documents that we're kicking off here um, over the next, we're kicking them off over the next couple of months. And now we're going to be really busy for the next two years. So we'll try to memorialize what's happening in kind of a monthly planning director report that'll come to you guys initially, and then it'll, it'll follow up and go to the council each month. So um, we're building that. It's been taking us a while to get organized. It's going to be nice having a, another planner on staff to kind of further in, inform the, that. Have these all gone through with the website or online? So this is true. Yeah. They so work. We're working so that's the all this work. Good. So we're Good. working through the portal. Um, it's been a transition for a lot of people. So what I try to do is uh, set them up with an appointment and help guide them through the portal. That way the next time they come and, and submit an application, it's a lot easier. So we have, we do have some people that say, hey, you know, it's, it's a little difficult for me. The moment they're sitting with me and have an appointment and really get the hang of it, they say, you know what, this is so much easier because I can just go in in the evening when I'm out out of work and, and resting at home and check out my application and I don't have to wait or take the day off to go into city hall. So I think it's efficient and I think it it's working well. And the month of July, we're just at day 18 and we've been extremely busy and all the applications have been through citizen search. So it's it definitely helps. It definitely helps. At that meeting. What was that? I would have liked to have had that meeting she's talking about because I think I was the first one. You number were one. one of the first. Number one. Oh, yeah. Really? yeah. And, uh, uh, <laughs> we, it was, there was a few things, payment for the payment of the permit. And I didn't that, know that before, yeah, before like, I was that, hired. That meeting. I don't remember sitting well, down with you. No, so it wasn't a meeting. Already. So it's, if somebody has an application that they want to submit, I usually. Right. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah, yeah. the one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. Kind of yeah. an orientation as to yeah, how yeah. it works. Just kind of talk. Yeah, we kind of just blended our way through it. <laughs> we got there. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we got there. It so down. yeah, so go. um, we didn't we started we didn't finish the conversation so maybe in the morning but we've got um, thirteen new homes that we need to approve here. just this week just this week yeah so um, River Ridge continues to build um, we've just recently met with them they're going to start construction to on their next phase um, with infrastructure and the park and then they will. Uh, start building those homes. Uh, that 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 phase has about fifty lots in it, if I remember. Um, Tuscany kind of stopped building, and the original builder sold the last forty lots to Promade Homes. They're a company out of the Tri Cities. Took them a while to get all of their CCBs in Oregon, but they got that all figured out, and now they are. I don't. We're approving thirteen, and I think prior to that we've approved six or eight already. We've well, approved quite a few. They are right in the middle of this going on. Right yeah. <laughs> Strike. It shocks me how fast they're putting these up, mm -hmm. and it concerns me because they're. I don't know. I lived in River Ridge, and very, very, they just did things that they're. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's just not. I don't know who is supposed to be. I don't know. I think it was. It's they're doing things very fast and very, very shortcuts. So although although they're doing things quickly. We are checking every single application. So we, although we're getting 13 applications, I print every single application, every single site plan, every single elevation, and check every single setback mm -hmm. and site design. Yeah. So there, there's no, no shortcuts yeah. that they can take I'm as in the planning. She's, not, she's talking more on the inspection side, but the when she moved side. into her first home on, on uh, Eagle Drive, yeah. Eagle Drive she was like the third house done. There was a second and, house done. Yeah, and, and I, I did work for her, and her house was built well. There wasn't any separation, no settling, none of that stuff. And, but as you went through those homes, as they continued to build, and you go around to the other sections of it down different streets, it is a, it's, a, it's a market improvement, or it's a market, you can tell that they were tired of building homes. Or those homes, yeah. like, whatever it was, you could the, the workmanship that I have to go back and repair now is, is totally different than what it was when she 
build her own. Because I, didn't I have bought to do anything. I bought my daughter and I bought her. Yeah, I didn't, we didn't have to do anything over there except for what she wanted hung here, hung there. Everywhere else we're doing repairs that, that you would think, yeah. why? Why are you? Mm -hmm. Call the builder back. Call the builder back. And I don't know if they intimid got intimidated or what, but none of them want to. And I'm like, well, you haven't owned the house very long. No, I'm not talking about you. Oh, I know, but my other house, we did. Yeah. They are not easy to work with. Yeah. They it just seems like they, like, their, their workmanship, the, the further they went, the less. Going to sell them for the next five years. And that's a discussion that we've had out there How multiple times sand. about yeah. the same guy building a whole bunch of them. It's like when you get down here to the last ones, there's no comparison to how the first ones were built. I mean, it's just plan wise and everything, yes. But. They sold, Tuscany sold all of that. And then the one person that came in and they're, they're I think there's, what you say, 13 right now? They're going up on my street next to me, two on one side, two on this side, four right here, two more over here. I mean, they're just going up so fast and they all look identical. And they, it's yeah, actually, they don't. They do not. <laughs> and we, Stephanie and I so had this just discussion with just so, what they got going for right now. No, it's they're different. very different. So the floor plans are different. The homes are different. Very are different there any styles. two stories going on? So, and so, I mean, off the top of my head, I can't give you all the details of each individual home. Mm -hmm. But when you look at the plans, they're different. Yeah, you see them as a finished product to see the differences. Mm -hmm. I mean, visually. Because right yeah. now, they all have the same... Because they all, they're all right now in the um, uh, it's just like framing. Or framing. It's just framing. So when you look at all of them, yeah. yeah, it's exact. They look like they just face different. Yeah, and, it, and that's what it's going to look like until you really know what was put into the home. Because when you see that floor plan, which we do have the ability to see the floor plan when it's uploaded through the system, they're different. Well, I'll say yours is absolutely completely different than anybody's on that street or on Anthony or on Rome. Mine isn't. There's I haven't seen one that, well, there's one on stage right that looks there. like yours. Yeah, identical. And and you, might like see them. Yeah. you might see them in the exterior kind of. On the outside, they look the same. On the inside, you don't. Because yes. I used to live in Tuscany. Yeah. No. And my house was completely different than the house that was right next to me that looked identical on the outside. Yeah, I didn't know was the one that you saw. I mean, just being on the inside. Yeah. The inside of yours, I've never seen another one like it. Not so, there. So, so they do all. They all. I mean, so they, I guess they, they get the bad taste in my mouth because of what I experienced over there. Yeah. And now this is happening again. I moved, you know, to another neighborhood. It feels like, oh my gosh, they do the same thing again. So the steps that it goes through, it goes to planning review, and then it goes to utility review, and that's where we collect the SDCs and we we authorize the connections to the water and the sewer. Which the developer has put in when they before they built the street as as they were building the street, and then it goes to the building program. Um, it's really kind of, um, you know, we do have a second inspector now, um, so it's Ben Glenn as kind of the solo. Um, he's had help on the plumbing side with a part time plumbing inspector, but Jose, who's can turn on his speaker if he wants to join the discussion. Um, He's a building inspector now. So he's actually going out there and looking at those homes. That will help a ton. And well, 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 I, you know, Jose just graduated from a program. And 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 Glenn has mentioned to me on a couple of occasions that Jose's gonna be tougher than he is. And mm -hmm. that's probably gonna be a good thing. I hope yeah. so. I really do. Well, so I'm gonna have to be overwhelmed. Yeah. yeah. Well, and, and I don't say that to say that Glenn wasn't doing his job, but there was a, a question. Well, there was a question one day about something is supposed to be every 18 inches and it was every 24 inches. And Glenn has enough experience in the industry to know that every 24 inches is still structurally sound, but the code actually requires every 18 inches. I, I, and I may have those distances wrong and, and I don't know what the specifics of it was. Jose is going to require him to put them in every 18 inches. So it's going to be it's going to be an interesting um, transition, I think, for the builders out there. I I know that when we went from it being, you know, Brad Cook was the building official for many many years here, and then it was Glenn, and there was a transition for people. Heck, there was a trans. I was at the county when Glenn uh, when um, Glenn came on board, and it was like this is going to be different. It's just going to be different. He he's going to look at things differently. That doesn't mean better or worse. It just means differently. Well, and I wonder if the first development may have been under the previous that she was talking about may have been under the with previous the building. No, Brett. No. No, it was still planned. It was planned. Yeah, 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 plan. yep. But he was also had he, they had fifteen homes going up at the same time. Yeah, that's I mean, what, he'd almost have to just stay there consistently. Plus, he had a park going in. That, 
I he's didn't a get busy, up in busy, busy, busy man. <laughs> yeah, he's a busy man. No, no inspector in Morgan has ever been as busy as the one snap. Mm -hmm. Yes. And Jose can only get there not fast enough. Let's go. Right. Yeah. And I don't think structurally we're talking about these houses being bad, being built bad. No. But there is there is noticeable things that I didn't call for that that I didn't see to begin with in in the earlier stages of the homes. And uh, it just it just it almost seems like we're tired of building these homes in Morgan, let's go somewhere else and build them the exact same one. Like, let's go to a different town. We're tired of hanging out here. That's almost how I feel about it. Like we hurried up, a few more nails are showing through the rafters that you didn't see before on the other ones. No, you can't get through that, to your roof or the, what's that called? The added cross Added base. because there's a beam right across the thing. <laughs> This night was going on. Straight let's face. let's hope that things get better as we go. I, yeah, I'm hoping. I'm hoping that this will be different than how Woodhill Homes finished, mm -hmm. and it will continue to stay. And we're a growing community, so we're going to see a lot of activity. Yeah. I don't. I don't think that that's going to end anytime soon. Mm -hmm. The more manpower we have, yeah, absolutely. The, I, mean, I did. I never the saw this on the home. The, the Rome Street home. I never saw that with any of those before the the. Duplexes on on um still here though. Over there at Chaparral or whatever. Those, those, those all the all the darker colors. That Mount Hood or Mount Adams. Mount Adams. Mount Adams. Mount Adams. Think, but anyway, you know what I'm talking about. Yep. Those are all identical, and they're all there's. I didn't have any of those issues at all anywhere. And Rome the same way. Just seemed like that one group up there, up on the other side of there. They just kind of <sighs> let's hurry up and get out of here. Yeah. So the other part of the planning official report um, that I want to touch base on is the last piece in your packet, and it's the, this is out of the municipal code, okay? So this is not out of the development code, this is out of the municipal code, um, and this section was, I think, I don't know when this was, this might have, I don't think this was in the original municipal code, but this certainly goes back to something that was adopted um, a number of years ago. It does look like there was an update to this in 2004, but otherwise it hasn't been updated since then. And you'll notice that there are a number of things in here that I am suggesting to amend. Um, and most of it is because it's just not either consistent with current practice or it's not consistent with state law. Um, and that's really what's driving um, the changes. So, um, we really don't want the mayor or the city engineer to be um, ex officio non-voting members, mostly the mayor, because he's he's the head of the council and that is your appeal body. So, you know, we don't want to see that that conflict there. Um, it's also just not general practice. Um, the city engineer, um, I don't even know where that came from. There's no promulgation in the in the in the code for a city engineer specifically. Under the election of officers, um, we do that uh, at the first meeting each year, and we don't elect a president and vice president, we elect a chair and a vice chair, um, and it is a um, chair who shall be members appointed by the council and who shall hold the office during that year at the pleasure of the commission. So um, a couple changes there. We don't have a secretary, uh, staff functions in that role, um, the quorum, the rules and regulations, the meeting times, a couple of changes there. Um, some of those are just uh, grammatical changes as well. Um, you can't call a special meeting, um, particularly not in three days. We have a notice requirement that that, that would conflict with. Um, if we ever found that we needed to meet more often than once a month, we'd let you know. I mean, we, we work with you to figure that out. Um, we do want a way to remove members, members who just stop coming, um, those types of things. We want that opportunity. Um, so really you have to be absent for three consecutive meetings or 50% of meetings in any six month period. And again, that is an unexcused absence. If you call us and say, hey, I'm homesick, I'm not coming, that doesn't count against you. So if you can't make a meeting, it's just, you know, let us know. I mean, like tonight it was like, Oh, we're going to have corn. <laughs> you know, we knew David wouldn't be here. And then right in the call that she was sick. And then and then Sam emailed me and said, I'm at a fire. And it's like, OK, I better make sure the, the other four are going to be here. Hence, you all got a phone call. So, um, yeah, um, there are, uh, the membership restrictions <coughs> um, are kind of a statutory thing. We left those. Um, 
employment of staff is much more um, formal today than it was when this was originally written. So we um, updated that a little bit. And then the powers of the commission, um, we made some changes there. Um, yeah. So I, I wanted you guys to see this. Um, this this will go to the council. Um, maybe it won't happen in August, maybe September or October. Um, this will end up in front of the city council um, and we'll adopt it as changes to the municipal code. So the municipal code is different than the development code. Um, you guys implement and make decisions based on the development code. The municipal code is really kind of what got, how we, it, it's what governs the city. It's how it tells us how we do stuff. Yep. So I have a quick question regarding that. Maybe and I, I shouldn't even bring it up, but I, I really feel like I need to because it's, it affects me directly or I'm directly involved with it. I do work for um, people that have been in here before, not at that time while they were here. And obviously if, if it was ongoing or if my decision up here made any difference in what they were doing, I would, I would remove myself from even thinking about voting. But I have done work for them before. And I would hate for it. I don't want it to come back as as being uh, um, partial. It, yeah, this had anything to do with the other. Um, but because on the restrictions here, it makes it pretty clear that like two two voting members can't be engaged in buying and selling, or they no more than two, right? Or that kind of that kind of relationship with this whole program, the whole the whole thing, and um, just just for I guess transparency. So I that, do deal with them. Right. I, deal, so, I, I work with them as a business, and but not. I would never do it when they're sitting here looking for approval. Right. So so I step away. So let's say part of what that's getting to is if let's say Leslie Pearson was appointed to the planning commission, and then um, Lee Dawkin was appointed to the planning commission. We could then come along and appoint Pam Dawkins to the sure. Planning Commission because we then have three real estate agents on the Planning Commission. And real estate agents, I will just tell you, are problematic to have on Planning Commissions. Um, not because of who they are, but because of what they do. And they regularly find themselves conflicted out sure. of being able to sit on the dais and make a decision because because they sold, they're in the process of selling the property to Joe who's doing the subdivision or they're representing, gonna represent Joe and selling the property after the subdivision is complete. So it creates that 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 conflict of interest sure. in you. Um, and they they will make money from that. You know, right. they're gonna make their commission. I would say that in most situations, if you've done previous work for somebody and they happen to be in here to get a variance for their fence height, um, unless they have contracted you to put that fence in, you're fine. Right, right. Now, so long as I understand when I need to step away because right. of the possibility. And, and sometimes it's not so much you need to step away. It's just that you need to tell people. Right. Hey, I, I've done I've done significant work for this for this landowner. Um, this is the role that I played. You know, and if that ever for any of you, if that ever comes up, just come in and talk to me before the. The hearing right you know give me a call come by the office we can kind of talk through what you perceive the conflict to be and we can make a determination that it is or isn't and 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 i haven't had that situation yet and sometimes it's ongoing it was sometimes always after it can be yeah um but in a situation like this we would still need you to function as a commissioner right. and issue your vote absolutely and and there's provisions to allow you to do that yeah yeah all right cool i just want to get that out there so that yeah you know yeah. So I don't need so much as a motion on this, but I would really like your consensus on it. That you're you're good with this. I want to see this kind of move forward. Um, if you've got any additional thoughts or concerns. So part that we you took out on um two sixteen one hundred power of commission that it's out because this is normally the Planning Commission doesn't have that authority. Is that why it's been um, redacted? Crossed out. The, the Commission shall control the subdivision of land and make make recommendations to the City Council that whole um, part of the paragraph. Yeah. So um, I think there's a difference. Um, so you, your role is in so. 
in the role of a, of a quasi judicial action. So let's go back to the Silver Garden Hotel complex. So your role there is to apply the law. So the uses that were proposed, two were allowed outright, and one was a similar use determination, which, but for it coming before you, the code actually allows the city manager and by virtue of the planning director or planning official to make that similar use de determination. If somebody comes in and, and let's say it's a use allowed outright and we're simply doing a development review. We did this recently for a food pod, a, a food truck. Um, we don't have an allowance for food trucks, but we do have an allowance in the zone for our restaurant. And so we made a staff level determination that a food truck is similar to a restaurant. And so therefore we allowed it in the zone where a restaurant would have been allowed. And we made that similar use determination. The code allows that to be done. The reason we put the, the other one in front of the planning commission is because it was a whole and you got to make um, decisions around the hotel and the rest uh, and the restaurant. Now, to be clear, you don't have the authority to say no to a use that is allowed outright, right. but you can influence how it's done. Those are the standards, the landscaping standard, maybe where the road might be, you know, those things about how it's done is in your purview. So um, I went and looked at powers of commission someplace and read it and pulled from it. I couldn't tell you exactly where because I did this probably two, three months ago. Um, and I borrowed, and I don't remember if I borrowed that from, I may have borrowed this from, I may have taken this from statute. There's some language in statute that I may have drawn this from. Yeah. Yeah. And I just don't have enough background or experience. It just seems like it's taken a lot. You know, like it's obviously it takes more of the responsibility and has a back to planning and scene management. Um, because I understand what you said, that if uh, somebody had applied for a certain type of permit, and that permit's already been, uh, you know, that's already, like, they want to do a commercial in the commercial zone, and yes, but we can't say no, because that's already what it's done. Right. But if they're coming in and asking, hey, we want an exception on this, you know, for it. Right. Well, and again, if, if so, so let's go back to the barbed wire on the fence, or the height of the fence. So that's a conditional use permit for the barbed wire. It's a variance for the height of the fence. And those things do, depending on the, the level, it may be a conditional use permit is a type three. It would come in front of the planning commission. A variance, there's two levels of variances. Um, the more minor level of variances is a type two. We provide notice to the adjoining, um, adjoining landowners, and then we issue the decision based on comments. And if there's no comments, we issue the decision as requested. Um, a more significant variance, like the fence height at the regional youth facility, that required type three review, which is a quasi-judicial decision in front of this body. So, so when we start talking about the dividing of land, the code also delineates, and I'm, I'm not going to get the, the spacing right, but for a land partition, that's a type two decision. So we're issuing notice to the adjoining property owners and then we're issuing the decision based on comments. For a subdivision, and I, I think it's for any subdivision, it, it's a it's a type three and it comes before the planning commission. So there are there are I guess it's a hierarchy of decisions. And the further up the hierarchy you go, it has to do with discretion. So <clears throat> when we're approving a house. Um, that's a type one decision. If you're building a house in a residential zone, right? Did you meet the setbacks? What should, can you meet the design standards? It can, can, if you can check the right boxes, we we issue the permit and off you go and build your house. But when, but when you can't, or you want to do something that's not authorized, then we review that and it's like, okay, so what are the changes that we're looking at? <clears throat> and is this a variance? Is this a, you know, where does it fit? Where does it fit into all the other aspects that we have of the ability to have that conversation about how to accomplish what you're asking for? I mean, I think that's one of the difficulties sometimes when you're working in a counter in a planning office 
is because the folks that come into the to the counter, and I, I encounter this all the time in the county. Well, I want to do this on my property and fill in this with whatever. If they never told you what they really wanted to do. They told you <laughs> what they thought you would say yes to. Yeah. And then if you had the conversation, you would begin, and, and as you could build a little trust and rapport with the person at the counter, they would go, well, we'd really kind of like to do this. And they give you a little hint of what they're really thinking. They wouldn't give it all away, but they give you a little hint. And then you would say, well, okay, well, we can we can see how we can make that work. And then you finally, you finally get to the point where it's like, well, really what we want to do is that. You know, this has become that, and it's really different. But at least now you know what they want. And now you can figure out how to work with them to get there. So a really good example of this is in the county, we've got several hunting preserves, um, bird hunting, and in one case, big game hunting. And the land use framework for hunting preserves has gone through several reiterations over time, over the past 30 years at the state level. Didn't have to have land use, didn't have to have land use, couldn't do other things, could do other things. And they just assumed that because they had this permit from the, the, the Oregon Department of Fish and Wildlife, they could do anything they wanted. So we've got lodges out there and they have kitchens and they, they host other events. And pretty soon it became clear that no, your Department of Fish and Wildlife permit didn't authorize you to have a lodge. It didn't authorize you to house 25 people. It didn't authorize you to have weddings on the property um, and, and then add whatever else to that. And so we worked with several of those facilities over time. And I know there was just recently another amendment to one of those um, that I saw go through the county stuff where we use the conditional use permit authorizations in the in this county's um, zoning ordinance. For one of them, we authorized it as a private park. We authorized um, the um, basically a bed and breakfast for their for their lodge. Um, we approved a commercial kitchen so they could serve meals. Because when you have a bed and breakfast approval, you can only buy a lot serve breakfast. But these folks were making big lunches and and um, serving dinners and, and holding corporate events and doing all kinds of other things. So for one of them, we found a way to approve it so they could have a commercial kitchen. So they could offer meals beyond just breakfast. So it was a really, it was a really intricate process of figuring out how to pull from here and how to pull from there and and approve that kind of suite of things to get them to the point where they can do what they wanted to do but that's the conversation that you have you have to work work through and get to that point and then you have to figure out how to have that conversation in front of the planning commission about okay so we've got this and in, in this case we really were dealing with code enforcement violations and how do we get these these and then you have to balance that against the economic benefit. Who wants the county to close down Rugs Ranch? Nobody. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody. Um, but from the perspective of number of rooms, in fact, I think that's the, the decision I saw lately. They're actually adding rooms to Rugs Ranch. It's like, whoa, okay, I don't know how they're going to get there, but go for it. I'm all for that. It's an economic driver. It's a real important economic driver to South Morrill County, but it's it's a matter of figuring out how to make all how that I don't know. And this this you're not asking for a whole bunch of change here. Rather, it seems to be more definition as to what we what our powers are. I, if you've gotten a little so. clearer on that bigger paragraph, then then that's because that's pretty blatant or just a flat statement up, up above. And it looks to me like you just got a little more detail with it. So that it's more understandable. I'm hoping so. What that it, was certainly yeah. my intent. But it take away or give us a lot of power to take away a bunch of power so much as define better what we already have so that certain areas are clear. That would be my intent. Yeah. 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 I like to change this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have a bed, breakfast, lunch, and dinner in. <laughs> I didn't can't even believe that something. <laughs> well, actually, that limitation for bed and breakfast to only serve breakfast, that's not a land use regulation. Right. That's a state health regulation. Right. And it makes sense. I mean, yes. Really. Mm -hmm. Food is food. <laughs> and what time? Yeah. I'll be for lunch. Then. You're going to prepare it the same darn place. It, it has to do... It has to do with how they, the same thing with the difference between a bed and breakfast and the end. So when you have a bed and breakfast up to 
I don't know if it defines it by rooms or number of guests, but whatever, I don't remember the specifics, but when you go higher than that, you also change the requirements for um, health and safety, fire and safety relative to um, ingress and egress and fire response and, and some of those other things about, how, you know, if there's a fire, how do you get out? Does it have to be sprinklered? So there's this, you can do a bed and breakfast usually in a traditional residential home, but when you shift and you start and you get higher than that number, you're now an inn and you have to meet other standards. We would allow a bed and breakfast in a in a read in a residential zone. We would not allow an inn in a residential zone. That would be in a commercial zone. Yes. Yep. All right. No day. Well, I guess we got uh public comment. We should open for public comments. Heard invite. Our three guests. Jose, any public comment? Oh, I think he's sleeping on the other I think end. He might be. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it was a good job. Decent, I feel like. Uh, yeah, so next meeting, August 15th. Yeah, I don't think we have. Have we received anything that would be an action item? Mm -hmm. So maybe September 19th. They're still canceling, yeah. We've already uh, got through 13 permits at this point. No, we, so, but those uh, 13 permits are type ones, and we'd have to have something by tomorrow in order to have enough time by the five weeks. To so, this. yeah, so no August meeting in person. So I would say, this is what I would offer for the August meeting, because it is August. We can tentatively cancel it. If something should come in, we'll we'll keep it on the agenda. But again, by tomorrow, actually today would have been the deadline. Today, oh, that's right. Today so would have been not, the deadline we've not received anything. What I would say, here's what I will offer. If you're interested, it is August. And if you want to take August off, it's, it's hot, it's summer. Maybe you want to you know have a fun time. Um, if not, if there's some training you want to do, we can certainly do some training. Um, you know, take that evening and spend an hour and a half and and pick a topic and 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 do a deep dive. Um, we could take you by then. We'll have a pretty good idea of where we're heading with all of these updates that we're doing. We could we could just have a just a work session around kind of where we're going to head and the work that's going to be coming your way in the next two years. Um, we really, we've, uh, you kind of, I've kind of touched on that, but we really haven't talked about it in any depth. So yeah, I feel like such a novice sometimes. Sometimes oh, I don't even want to open it. It's not even funny. Yeah, so I, mean, I, I don't even feel like any extra something. training, any extra information, any of that kind of stuff. Okay, well, let's keep it on the agenda. Let's do some training. Um, we'll brainstorm some ideas. Um, let's build some trust in people's one. <laughs> All right, trust building. Come on, trust building. You want real trust? trust no, I don't like the ball. You go first. Like, no problem. <laughs> Zip line, no problem. I'm not going to stand up there and fall backwards and expect y'all to catch me. <laughs> oh, you guys, maybe you might. We might be able to catch you. The rest of them. <laughs> okay, so training it is. Okay. Um, my focus is probably going to be on just kind of maybe a really good summary and conversation about all the work that is coming, mm -hmm. um, because it's really starting to come together. We've selected a contractor for a project. We know who the contractor most likely is going to be. Well, we've selected contractors for two projects. We know have a pretty good idea of, oh, and we've got the contractor for the TSB update. And we will probably by the 1st of August know who the contractor for our fourth project will be. And I will feel much more comfortable about exposing those projects and those contractors in August. So we can certainly talk about where we're at with all of those conversations and what's happening. So I'll be able to kind of lay that plan out. Um, what's we'll the power, battery powered survey equipment that was on the corner out here today? They had it connected to a battery and there's I'm, nobody around. I have no so idea. It's, it's I saw something that collecting too. data or are we asked did somebody ask for a report of something over there that it's just sitting there? And I saw another one somewhere else, but it didn't have a battery and there was a guy standing next to it. I have no idea. I saw that too. I was like, yeah. huh, who's doing the survey right here? And I, what are they surveying? Yeah, I don't know. Right. I don't know. Good question. Maybe the traffic. I just knew you'd have the answer for that. I, <laughs> I had the same question, but I, I didn't get the answer. Right. So 
Yeah, sorry. Go and hook the battery to who shows up. <laughs> right? There you go. There you go. Yeah. Um, okay, training it is August 15th. Six, Sounds like a plan. Six p.m. That's a Thursday. Six p.m. So, how are you guys liking the new day and the new time? It's only know. been once, but I guess we like the new time. Yes. Yeah. Thursdays work really good for me too. So, <laughs> had to get out. Cool. I'm less picky on the day, the time. Nice. Same day is not so good for me. So what else? Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. I've been asked, well, Bob can I sleep? I had to get out cooler. Okay, well, right. well, I guess so. Uh, we'll see what happens when we get to the journal. Okay. All right. Eight or one. Eight or one.